West Hill United is a progressive spiritual community where how you live is more important than what you believe. West Hill United is a people, a place, an idea. We are a community living out of a progressive faith, striving to make a positive difference in our own lives, the lives of others, and the world. Join us Sundays at 10.30 a.m. or connect with us at any time. Dennis Augustine has chosen the following readings. And when we conclude them, I will simply say that Dennis has offered these for our wisdom. And if you're invited to respond, we will walk in its light. First reading. Words hold profound power, and when utilized in poetic form, they have a tantalizing tendency to coalesce into a, a collective subconscious. I'm going to read that to you again, so you can chew on it better. World, words hold profound power, and when utilized in poetic form, they have a tantalizing tendency to coalesce into a collective subconscious. They foster a language that speaks not only to our individuality, but also to our shared experiences, as well as the often indescribable nature of human emotions and thoughts. The richness and adaptability of poetry Make it a tool that can shape and mold understanding, drawing together the braided strands of human experience, permitting identification, empathy, and transformation. And that quotation about poetry was written by Caroline Harrow, and there was a great deal of poetry in those words as I read them, it's very rich. And the following are two quotations from John F. Kennedy. As a great democratic society, we have a special responsibility to the arts. For art is the great democrat. I like that. Art is the great democrat, calling forth creative genius from every sector of society, disregarding race or religion or wealth or color, what freedom alone can bring is the liberation of the human mind and a spirit which finds its greatest flowering in the free society. I see of little more importance to the future of our country and our civilization than the full recognition of the place of the artist. And as I've learned over the years, sometimes slowly, art is a very broad word. Anything creative, I used to think it was just paintings, artists, but it's every creative type of work from quilts to, to murals to photo albums to everything that brings beauty and, and uh, interest and often protest and point. Second quote, the life of the arts far from being an interruption or a distraction in the life of a nation, is very close to the center of a nation's purpose and is a test of the quality of a nation's civilization. Offered as wisdom for the journey, may we walk, may we walk in this light. Babette. Thank you so much, Scott. I, I'm, first of all, just a little bit of a sound check. I've decided to be in this common area here outside at Hayman's Market. They're playing some music videos in the in the background over here. See so on this big screen. <laughs> so I'm not sure if it's coming. How's the sound? Can I get some thumbs up if it sounds pretty good? Nice. Wonderful. It's, I got to say, my heart is is just so full. 
uh, seeing everybody here. It's so great to see you again. Frank and Mike and Lori, Scott, Randy, Wendy, all of everybody, Gene. I, I, I start, I got to stop myself from naming names because, you know, I will, I will miss somebody and then I'll feel badly. But it's just, my heart is full. As uh, Scott has said, I have, I've been part of the, the West Hill family before. I uh, moved here to Barbados about two years ago um, to make a difference with regards to technology. Um, but when I left, I, I certainly missed you. I missed you a lot. I, uh, and I really wanted to take this time just to, um, to share a few things with you about, first of all, I guess how I feel about West Hill and, and what it is and what it's represented in my life. Um, and then maybe as a friend to share some some hopes and dreams for, for what I have for you as well and for what you um, become and are becoming. And perhaps also to share some gratitude for some of the things that had set off in my own thinking and some of the things I wanted I want to do here today um, in Barbados as well. You know, um, I, I want to call out especially uh, both you, Kevin and, and Anne, when you shared that experience with regards to your mom and, and uh, the medically assisted dying, these are the kinds of conversations that we have so many times at, at West Hill. I mean, we talk about, uh, we talk about the finitude of life. Or what does the end mean? And we talk about what it means to be a, a living thing and our responsibility towards each other and our interconnectedness. So, um, you know, and it, you know, we were talking earlier on before the call began about, um, being on virtually, and I commented, well, maybe we're just virtual all the time, not just online, but in our own heads. <laughs> and, you know, when I said those sorts of things, I can be in an environment where folks in this kind of a community understand what I'm talking about. And uh, somehow it makes me feel like a little bit less of an alien on earth. Um, I came from a a religious background. My father was a minister. My mother is a minister. I'd like to say she's uh, Black Mother Teresa without a sadistic streak. And those of you who know a few things about that will know what I mean. But uh, her heart is full of love for people. And I learned lots of wonderful things from the church. But when I was a young man and I, and I people were looking at me saying, Pastor Dennis, how do I live? And I realized that I didn't know a darn thing about life be able to be telling folks how to live. Um, I left. I left the ministry. And when I left, I had no friends and I had uh, no job. And I, I didn't know how to make my way in the world. And I really felt like a bit of a freak, a little bit of an alien. And I ran into, I came across a place for, um, for clergy with you no longer had supernatural beliefs called the Clergy Project. And joined that community many years ago. It was one of the early people there. And there I ran into, into Greta in the clergy project. And uh, she was a member there too. And all of a sudden, there was, I was surrounded by a bunch of people who understood me a little bit about where I was coming from. And, and could also understand maybe that there was some baby in that bathwater that we were, you know, I previously had started throwing out. Uh, there was something still good that I craved in terms of being part of a community you could speak and you could talk and share deeply about some of the most meaningful things in our lives. And, uh, and you made me feel welcome. You made me feel uh, welcome amongst you. And I really just want to, to say thank you for that, first of all. It has been a, it was a joy to, to be part of you. And when um, Greta said she had this concept for engaging more with the community there in Scarborough when we started talking about ideas for doing that. We started talking about this thing um, that we were imagining called third space, a space where we could meet in the middle, um, you know, not in our homes or our churches, but somewhere, as Scott has said, mediated by the arts and um, something in the middle there that could grind us together. And that was what we, I was uh, really focused on during my time there with you and on the board at West Hill. And when I left, I missed that so much. I missed the idea of what that could have, could have been. Um, you made me feel welcome there. I want to take a few minutes just before I, I continue talking with you um, to let somebody who's on the call, a couple people on the call say hi, because 
here in Barbados when I arrived. Um, and Barbados is in the West Indies. It's a Caribbean nation. And like many of these Caribbean nations, it's very, very Christian. It's very, very kind of more conservative leaning Christian as well. And sometimes somebody with more humanist liberal views might um, feel a little bit lonely, um, like an alien. But um, I want to call out Michelle, Farley and Michelle, uh, maybe yourself. You want to, if you can, just Michelle is there on the call. I, somebody can maybe pin her. I just want Michelle to say hi on behalf of the Barbados humanist uh, community, first of all. Maybe just tell us a little bit about the community, Michelle, and uh, and then we'll get back to Scott. Hi. Hi, Dennis. Thanks for introducing me. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope everyone can hear me clearly. It was great to be on the call this morning. It was very refreshing, honestly, very different. <laughs> <laughs> um, different good. <laughs> um, yeah, so my name is Michelle. Um, I'm from Barbados and uh, probably so. Um, yes. So I think around COVID or so just briefly, um, just before COVID kind of fell upon us, um, I changed my views on life and uh, I looked around, I looked around Barbados, metaphorically speaking, and found no one. <laughs> so I decided to create something, which is something I'm passionate about, in passionate about in general. Like I believe kind of my heart and my passion here on earth is creating. Um, I'm a musician, I'm an artist. So I was like, well, there's nothing. So let's make something. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's why we have Humanist Barbados. I'm gonna shout out Marlene, who's on the call here. Um, I think someone else is here. Is Reed here? Like, hey, hey, both of you. Hi, Reed. Hi, Marlene. And uh, hi. hi. <laughs> I hope you found the call as refreshing as I did. I love the human connection, the sharing of stories, the sharing, the truthful sharing of what's going on in your life, um, the just the connectedness of the community, and. Uh, I'm very, very, very happy that we could join the call. Thanks, Dennis. Thank, thank you, Michelle and 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 Marley and Reed. Everybody's joining there. I wanted I wanted them equally to to really get introduced to you and to see what this community is about and to hear some of the things that I have to say as well. Um, as I was saying, you know, you played a very important life part in my life um, in my transition right from faith to. Um, it's, it's to my more expansive view of myself. Um, with this message I've entitled Mirror, Mirror, and really, folks, I mean, you have been, uh, for me, in so many ways, a, a mirror. And it's really helped me to be, I think, one of the things that we get from being in community and talking about some of these deeper issues about life is a forum that we will find almost nowhere else in our society to see that part of ourselves. I mean, we're not gonna get that in school. Maybe you'll get that in philosophy class in a university and to some degree. Um, you're probably not going to get that in a lot of your more casual connections at work and in other parts of the community. But here um, amongst each other, we find that with each other. And that is a gift that enables us to look a little bit more deeply at who we are and I remember getting into West Hill and hearing so much more about the interconnectedness of, our, of life and how everything in life is connected. And then we have a responsibility to each other and yes, indeed to all of like, all living things. And that encouraged me to start looking a little bit deeper. And every time I peel back another layer of the onion of what is my identity, um, I found another layer of connection whether it be the language that I use to talk to myself in my own head or the, the concepts that undergird those things, my role in the world when I describe myself, what am I? And I often will say I'm a son or I'm a, you know, I'm a business person and all of those things are, I talk about. Every layer is in relation to somebody else. It's another layer of connection. And as I go deeper yet, if I go to the physical layers of the, way, of the world and the way it is, and even at its most fundamental, 
you know, let's take it all the way down to fundamental quantum layers. It's all interconnected, isn't it? And so that aspect of connection that is goes, it's not just, um, yes, on the, the physical layer, but it's also, it has a lot to do with us understanding ourselves. And I've, so I, I've loved you guys for a long time because of that, because it's you encouraged me to take another look at myself and how I'm connected to the world and, and to you and to what we should do as a result of that. I think that it's um, one thing that, you know, people have always said, I've heard from folks like Whitney Houston, who has said that the greatest love of all is to start to love yourself. Well, to love yourself, you have to start to know yourself. And we can only really know ourselves in connection with the other people and with the world. And this is a kind of a space where we can start to process that. There's a, um, there's a sociologist named uh, Homi K. Baba. Uh, and he spoke about a concept of a place called the third space. That space between your home and your work or your home and your public life where um, your, yourself and, and the public, where you start to assimilate who you are. And it's an important role in society. It's where we meet on neutral ground, where we can start to have conversations around things like values um, that are outside of ideology. Right? And these kinds of places are, are really lacking in, in our society. And I think we're starting to see a lot of the impacts of that. Yes, we have the arc of history that's bending towards greater liberality and justice and all of those things. But if you turn on the news today, you can also see we've got the other force that's really tugging at things today um, to greater polarity, um, to greater othering of people. And where are we going to find something in the middle that's going to counteract that? I think that we need to start to do that much more consciously as a society. Um, we need to do that much more deliberatively. Um, yes, there's been the old good trick of things like the church and religion. If you look, if the numbers are waning. How are we going to build a bridge from that, what was, to what needs to be in order so that we can continue to have some shared values in our cultures and some shared values between each other, something where we can meet on mutual ground. And I say, there's a need for that third space, that place in between you and me, where we find, uh, we find out more about ourselves and about, about each other. So, I mean, I, those are one of the reasons why I really, some of the reasons why I really love and appreciate what West Hill is. I think West Hill has been the part of the evolution of the church in a way that I think we don't realize. I think that I've said this before, that sometimes you're a bit too humble in terms of what you've done um, inside the United Church, and what it means in the context of not just the United Church history, but as a former evangelical conservative minister in the con broader context of the bending of the church history, but also, yes, of society and uh, there's right now we're at this existential point, and I think not just for society, but also I know it's a really important point in your history for you. And so maybe I'll just take a few moments to talk to you as a as a friend, you know. And I've already kind of put out there why why I, I love you and what you are and what you represent. I, I think that there's also a job that a friend does to to say what they're afraid of for you, what they hope for you as you make big decisions. And right now, I know that you are making some big decisions, right? You're going to be choosing your leaders soon. You are plotting um, your future course and what you will do strategically. This is the time for you to think deeply about what you are and what you will be. And it's a time when I want to encourage you not to let that light go out in the world. I think that what you are, I think if I want to borrow words from my past, I will say you are the salt of the earth. You are a light on a hill. If you hide it under a bushel, what good is it? Uh, there is a need for us to really start to value what it is that we've built here together um, and to start to spread it. Uh, I think we've talked about, you know, I, I, I go back to your the values that I share and love with you. One of them says, 
in light of our interconnectedness in life, we choose love as our highest value and guide. And that is wonderful. But then it goes on to say, by love, we mean actions that embody justice, compassion, honesty, openness, integrity, courage, kindness for self, others, and the planet. By love, we mean actions. Yes, it is not something where my good words are going to be good enough because if I'm just saying wonderful things and having wonderful warm feelings in my own heart towards people and I'm not getting out there and I'm not sharing it, what good is it? It's just a light put under a bushel. It's just salt that's lost its saltiness. What good is it? So this is what I hope for you as you consider your path. Not to let, not to stop here. And, um, you know, we... We talk about the phases of life, and all of us are becoming much more acutely aware of the phases of life. We've come this far, and there are things of value that we have brought with us this far. Do not let them go unseen, unheard. Um, when I got here to Barbados, and I've been focused on technology, I realized one of the things that's been an impediment to the technical community here in Barbados has been that there's not been as much community. I, I, I guess, you know, they say that if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. My, my one and only skill is putting people together and building communities. So I think that's a solution to everything. But I, it really is been an issue here in the digital community in Barbados. And I s saw a need to start putting folks together. So what did I do? I spent some time talking to people individually, one-on-one, -on -one, spending time with technologists, spending like, you know, show, showing some genuine interest in what they're about, what they need, and then bringing them together. I have a Tech Tuesdays call, and those that call started to grow by virtue of the little bits of connection that I spent time seeding all through the week by the actions, not by the words. I know as a minister, and this is as an evangelical minister, so might I just dare to say that I'm going to encourage you to be a little bit more evangelical at this time in your history. I'm going to urge you to do the same thing that I did when I was building churches or building communities here, which is to get out and talk to people and let them see that they that you love them. Let them see uh, your words in action. By love, we mean actions that embody justice, compassion, and so forth. And so that's what we're, I, I'm, you know, I've been doing, trying to do here um, in Barbados as well. I have some uh, co-conspirators who have, uh, who we're starting to think a little bit more. And I, it's starting inside out for me. I'm doing this partly because, hey, I miss community of that kind. And so uh, we're trying to reimagine and relaunch this whole concept of creating a third space right here in Barbados where I am. I'm hoping that that's why I wanted Michelle and others in the humanist community to see what you guys do for us to see where we're coming from and you're part of those seeds and then imagine where we're going to be going. I decided to do this call today right from Hamas Market and no, it's not a fake background. It's a real place. And I'm going to show you a little bit. So here, here I am in Hamas. I'm going to unplug this. Hopefully it all still works. It's a, it's a market here. Inside this uh, big common area, you'll see some people eating and big screen and so bar over there. And if I go over here, there's all kinds of shops and vendors and my wife's photo studios is up there. <laughs> but Heyman's used to be a sugar plane, sugar cane or a sugar factory. It was a place if you go to the uh, plaque on the wall where uh, there was a roster of slaves that used to be owned, or enslaved people, rather, that used to be owned at this very sugar, um, sugar factory here in Barbados. And now it's being reimagined as a place, and on the, on the banner of payments, it says to, to meet, eat, shop, live. Uh, so they're trying to build a community hub here, our payments, and, but they have a need for a purpose um, for doing or for that community. And that's what um, I saw a need for. And we have this memorandum of understanding with uh, the folks who own payments here to build a community 
and a community in my mind that needs to be facilitated or needs to use the arts to draw people into those conversations. A community that would be after, um, you know, in, in, in the ways that, uh, that Ray Olberg might have spoken of, uh, a good, great place, or a great, good place, a place that is neutral ground. Uh, there is a place that is accessible to people, a place where you can find regulars who will embrace you just because you are part of their community, a place where we can start to have deeper conversations around how we feel about our values and so forth, a, way, a place that can be a home away from home for folks. And so we're starting to reimagine that and do that. And myself, uh, there's a gentleman here by the name of Peter Thompson, who was part of the Barbados Welcome Stamp Program of encouraging the government to do the Welcome Stamp Program. We're trying to bring in digital nomads um, in, in the communities here, um, Bajan entrepreneurs, Bajan creatives, uh, people from the humanist community, uh, folks from faith communities, and see if we can, you know, get here and hang out and have conversations about values. And that's what we're, we're doing. And um, yeah, and I think the most important part of that is going to be really to provide people with a way for them to feel like they belong. And we're going to make sure we do that by really being a little bit more, as I said, evangelical in our outlook to um, to kind of build those, build those connections, build those relationships that bring folks into that conversation that not just hides it under the hill, under the, under the bushel, but really lets that light shine. So that's what I, I hope, um, that's what I've learned from you. That's what I've taken from my journey at West Hill so far. And that's what we hope to be doing. We were going to have a, an event on the 15th um, of this month, but there's some things happening in my life. I'll actually be in Toronto from uh, August 20th to September 3rd for uh, an arbitration, unpleasant stuff, but it'll be nice to be in Toronto and I'll need to focus on that. But when we get back, I'll be working with my uh, with Peter Thompson, with Greg Albright, I don't think they're on this call today, uh, and a few others to uh, build up the whole concept of third space, the programming around that and how we'll get people into this really dynamic environment um, to start to have those deeper kind of conversations. And I um, wanted to let you know that you did this um, in some small way. And I hope that you will find some way to drive and continue your own evolution and to be that force for change that I know that you can and should be. That's what our values say. By love, we mean actions. And so, um, so mirror, mirror. Um, I hope that... Uh, and you'll receive that as some of my reflections on what you've helped me see about myself. And I humbly offer some of what I hope for you and see that you could. That, that is all. That is all. Am I, am I still on? <laughs> okay, lovely. Um, Dennis, we just lost. Now, who feels they know Dennis Augustine? <laughs> Put your, <laughs> thank you for the personal way you shared with us today. Dennis, um, what we heard was a pastor That's, <laughs> still you, yes yep. <laughs> which which you know the the original word is the idea of, of the shepherding um, and it's purely a role of a leadership role and you and I have come from a world where we thought that was something and we don't think that's something anymore which is just fine but I love that you brought you brought yourself to us as I knew you would we knew you would um, I have a, a couple of questions for you, and sure. the first question is, and you mentioned the, the majority of folks where you live uh, are in a, uh, the, the double there was an evangelical belief system and also a conservative social approach. Your, your hope is to connect on the values. 
What would you say mm. you have seen either the most or, or what are the obstacles you either have or you anticipate running into when um, with, the, with the, the divide there between beliefs and not beliefs in order to focus on the values? What are some of the obstacles, uh, Dennis? Well, I think, um, so let me color this a little bit. The um, Barbados is, and the Caribbean is very Christian. Having said that, a recent census here in Barbados had, and it was, at first it was miscommunicated. They took a census, one of the recent censuses um, had a box where it let people tick off whether or not they had, um, where they were Christian, whatever the religion was, and then had, they whether they were like no religious affiliation. And that happens to be the largest or fastest growing group here in Barbados, no religious affiliation and Islam. Um, both of those areas were growing rather rapidly. But it, and it was misreported as people, you know, as atheism growing within Barbados. And it was outrage at the thought that we were losing our way, um, that this was happening. But I say that to say there was not the, the, the outrage part was a vocal, I believe, minority um, who were still very much clinging to conserving what was from the past. And that, I think, is the, the greatest obstacle. It is the, um, shall I say, the, the death throes of the old way. That when in the old ways are backed into a corner, they fight back very hard. And it, but yet, there is, a, the, there is this just general trend in, in all of us, in our cultures, right across the world, towards, um, towards greater liberalism and freedom and, and to the more inclusive thinking. This is the, the greatest trend. But I think that the, as we get further down um, the path of having that change, it is the resistance, um, the desire to preserve what we have that is our greatest um, obstacle. And I dare say, it's also the greatest obstacle for West Hill, right? We might want, if, uh, you have something wonderful and you definitely, we all, we all know, I was part of the meetings and part of the board meetings when we were just making the transaction with regards to the church, with regards to the girl and boys and girls club and what would we do afterwards. And I know that there's a feeling of, hey, we have to protect what we have, right? And these are the twin forces. It's, 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 it is laudable to protect what is valuable, but then you start to put it in a box. You start to try to conserve, conserve and preserve it. And you don't need to preserve living things. You preserve dead things. Um, and that's what I wanna to say to you today. We need to get our heads out of that mindset, um, get into a growth and and change mindset because that was that is what life is about and like we're still still here still not dead yet like monty python would have said um not dead yet and so we have to keep on changing and so i think that's it's that it's that scott it's the um it's the desire to preserve um the sometimes the sometimes well-founded desire to preserve what the folks have thought is good in society uh that is the the danger but i think that our way to our way to um, to counteract that is to say we're not trying to get rid of what is good. What we're trying to do is to help it evolve to a place where it can be more effective. And so I, I that's how we plan on countering it. But uh, yeah, I think you get my point. I, I I would like to summarize your answer by saying evolution, not taxidermy. <laughs> exactly. Would that, that somehow? <laughs> that, that, that's exactly it. That is exactly it, my friend. Yes. Yes. Oh, lovely. Um, I, I'm so sorry. I can't remember the name of the of your friend that came on the the, the Oh, Michelle. Mich Michelle. I yeah. love Michelle. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Michelle. I love how you put something, and I want to I want to expand it. You said there was, you looked around for something and you saw there was nothing, so you'll have to make something. And I like that idea in everything. We look around in our own 
in our own values, in our own life, in our own actions, and if there's something missing, well, then we're gonna have to make something there. And that's evolution too, is growth never stopping to grow, not in an exhausting way, in a life-giving way. Yes. So Dennis, I love that you've been with us. Uh, Zoom makes it feel like you, you were right in the room with us. It's so beautiful. Thank nice. you for the time you put into that. Thank you for your readings. Um, and your presence, and thank you for sharing both in, in, a, in a, of yourself and of a vision. Very, whatever we've encouraged you in there, you've just encouraged us again. So we thank you for that. And, uh, and I'm just gonna ask Babette to lead us in a song that kind of sends, sums that up and sends us out. Become a sustaining champion of West Hill United's work by committing to an automatic monthly donation. Learn more or donate now through Canada Helps.